we shouldn't be complacent by the fact that there have been no scandals and there's no revelations in the media that actually, actually everything's fine in Scotland. Having said that, I think actually it's a really good time to consider these proposals. I think, you know, in terms of good governance and kind of uh, an even look at these things, uh, best to do it not in a crisis moment when you're reacting to something, but to actually look across the field and think, what can we do here to improve the transparency and accountability of this parliament? I think they're very, very sound principles. And I think proposals around lobbying transparency are completely aligned to the founding principles of this institution, I think would make a real concrete contribution to actually advancing that. For the Electoral Reform Society, all the research that we've done through focus groups and our Democracy Max inquiry shows us that the general public feel that there is an, an opaqueness and a secrecy going on behind politics and they would like more transparency, which would improve their confidence in the process um, and therefore potentially um, increase their involvement in the political sphere, which is something that we are very worried about. It captures the lobbying activity. The one that's proposed in Westminster at the moment is a list. It's a list of names and clients. It doesn't show anything, any information about their interaction with government bodies. So it needs to have what people are lobbying on and whom in government they are lobbying. Otherwise, you just have a list of names. Um, so it needs to, if you're going to have transparency in lobbying, it needs to be back, capture the lobbying activity, not just who. We need to be careful about um, just being realistic about the difference between an organisation whose prime purpose is to lobby, you know, it's well resourced, that is very able to comply with a, a regime because it is someone whose job it is to do so, and a very small charity or community group, a grassroots group, that might forget or that might not get the paperwork because they don't have an office or, you know, that might uh, be acting in the, in the very best of faith but actually not keep up to date with the register and we maybe have to have some way of trying to distinguish whether there's been administrative oversight or, or you know, change of staff, that kind of thing, um, or whether there, there's some kind of deliberate evasion going on. I think, I think that's important. I suppose from the society's point of view, certainly we've detected no particular problem uh, with uh, what lobbying uh, is carried out in uh, the Scottish Parliament or with the Scottish Government. Um, I think, though, uh, echoing uh, what Juliet has said, um, in terms of, of maintaining public trust and confidence in the system, um, it, the, uh, the system has to display that it is free from uh, any suggestion that, that there might be a lack of transparency. Uh, and so, therefore, um, uh, I think we, we're in the position where uh, we agree that theoretically, um, uh, whilst there might not be a problem, that doesn't mean to say that uh, additional transparency wouldn't help there, uh, uh, prevent there from being a, a problem emerging in the future. Lobbying, I think, is one of the most contested definitions of any concept in political science. You know, rarely get two scholars that are going to agree with what is meant by it or what's meant by the term lobby group. Now, uh, generally, I think an accepted definition would be to the effect of a, lo a lobby group is an individual or an organization which would have shared or vested interests, specific interests, that tries to seek to influence political decisions. Now, it's a very important distinction to make between influencing and seeking to influence. A lobbyist isn't necessarily successful, but they seek to influence.